welcome everybody to the second day of the e yantra robotics competition eyrc 2020 21 e yantra teaches practical robotics and engineering skills through its competition themes this year's themes were drawn from the domain of industry 4.0 problems since covid lockdown made it difficult to distribute hardware e yantra made covid friendly themes through its use of open source simulation technology we have another very exciting theme today this is a simulator based theme it's not a kind of toy thing simulators can give you very much the real experience for instance we will show you today a theme called sahayak bot where a robot and arm has to negotiate an arena comprising of some rooms and picking and placing objects and we've done that inside a simulator and the same code can also be taken and dropped into a real mobile robot that we have in our lab and our team shall discuss that also we outlined the problem along with an objective formula for grading a finished solution students were taught all the skills required through project based learning in competition mode over a period of 6 months teams uploaded a video of their final run along with an account of their experiences in reaching the goal at the finals the students faced a viva by an iit bombay faculty jury we have a bunch of iit bombay faculty here with a friend from industry we now highlight the stages of the competition and detail the skills learned at each stage the aim of this theme is to develop software stack for autonomous pick and place application within an indoor environment and while doing so uh, the learning objectives are to see what different application or what different softwares are used mostly in mapping navigation and manipulation etc next the tool involved over here is all uh, is all surrounding linux uh, linux operating system because everything is done open source So Linux and ROS is majorly available on Linux. So we use Python, Gazebo. Some have used PCL also, which is Point Cloud library, which is generally used for 3D computation, etc. Then there was Move It, Move Base, and then some have used Find 3D object, which for perception, which we'll discuss later on by student himself. Simulation environment basically uh, consists of a robot model and uh, the world, the simulator world. So first, let's start with the robot model. This is a robot model that you see on this screen. It's basically designed uh, on the basis of the real hardware. So it, it's like an unmanned ground vehicle with the industrial robotic arm attached on it, and also it consisted of a gripper and various sens- sensors. So entire dynamics and plugins were added by the Yantra team and given to the uh, participants. already plan with your simulation time you plan the total path how you handle this you already okay, plan a path between the two points already you know all the predefined position of the waypoints right yeah we know all the predefined weights for simulation time it take to go from one node to other node okay so you just calculate the those. waypoint and then you yeah. do that instead uh, yes. you have not given the path distance or something you calculate only the simulation time no like simulation time was uh, more this has been like path it wasn't planning the same path every time so simulation time was constant more, more or less so we use simulation time as a weight between but, the nodes in the graph and in real time you cannot uh, go with simulation time always because yeah. uh, this will not be the real case scenario that is one point to address on this maybe you have planned paths between two points right maybe you would be having uh, two waypoints right so what is the background algorithm uh, connecting these two points maybe there would be some you will be giving a point a and point b right from this point to that point that is what yes. navigation stack handles right goal obviously send goal from your current position yeah. to goal uh, what is the path or what is the algorithm making you to create that path can you you know this algorithm behind it if suppose i am getting an obstacle of 10 cm height or uh, say i am having a shoe or a socks 
or something is left on the path of the robot how you will handle this this 2d leader is a slice see for example yeah. if you map a table with the four legs say you have several four leg tables in your simulation part or in the environment so yeah. uh, if it's a four leg part if it's a 2d laser uh, if you handling only with 2d laser it will detect only the four legs it will automatically goes in center of this how do avoid uh, to differentiate that it is a table and how you will handle with the laser how you will predict this scenario in the perception part there were uh, research papers uh, written on the type of detectors and descriptors of the open cv like uh, there are fast brisk and all those uh, types we just studied uh, like what would be the options and also knowing that since the find object 2d package uh, does in a way like it uh, sees for the shade difference like the color difference and plots a difference uh, where the difference is seen it uh, points the detector so uh, later on after the object uh, image of the object is checked by using find object 2d package uh, then it checks for the detectors rather than for every pixel in the image so we found that uh, there are some affine values that uh, the number of detectors in the neighbors can be increased and uh, but at the same the computation would go slow and literally in our case the mouse would also even hang so what we used was like a ros launch function and to start and stop the package while detecting the object the speed at which it approached the first waypoint so to speak was really too fast compared to all the rest and thereafter the speed was substantially slow if you replay all the others that i have presented so far I certainly feel that your initial speed was. I almost felt it's going to knock down somewhere. And when it approached the table where it had to pick up that battery or whatever, it kind of went forward and came back a little bit. That was point one that I observed. And I want to know why it was so fast. And did you guys deliberately do that? Did you guys try to optimize something? That was part one. Part two is regarding the way the arm folds itself. Again, I think you guys have a slightly different strategy as to how you have folded the arm. And in the top view, I think the arm is not completely folded inside. Maybe my eyes are not as sharp. So I have noticed that the arm is not contained within the bounding rectangle of the moving platform. Did you guys notice that? Initially, the uh, the path is not very curvy, or there's not many obstacles between it. So we tuned the values in a very different way. As for the other paths, where the values are very different way, so there are two different tunings going on at the same time. Uh, like there's a dynamic tuning going on for the different part of the map, so uh, so as to optimize the time based upon that. We tried different position uh, positioning the arm. So so bot was actually sometimes colliding or sometimes it was uh, its center of mass changes and it skids. These things were happening because we all are uh, having a low end laptop. So it was it was showing different result on different laptops. So according to my laptop, it was best position that way in this way that. Uh, we did actually try to error different arm position so that it bot smoothly moves that way and for the navigation part i would like to add that we actually wanted high speed no matter what uh, also one more reason contributing to the if you see the initially speed was high because we were getting good real time factor uh, in the starting and as the move it commander initializes and laptop becomes hot so we weren't uh, getting sufficient computational power and our rtf uh, drops down so that's why even video itself becomes long initially our rtf was very good and slowly after the task progresses our rtf drops down so that's why it also appears to be move faster what laptops are you using I actually i am using acer nitro ryzen 5 2500u laptop it has ryzen 5 chip and rx 560x gpu so problem is that if you see the benchmark result it will give sufficient good benchmark benchmark result in, in fact to uh, the Piyush and Kamlesh have good benchmark result as compared to my laptop, but they, their laptop won't perform the task uh, much better as compared to my laptop because the uh, Intel chips are not very, actually as temperature rises, they are not very thermal efficient. So actually thermal efficiency is also things that matter come, comes into the picture because the task itself is going to be 10 minutes long. So our RTF will decrease, our response time of robot will decrease. So we have to set the waypoint and tune a robot according to the RTF because at 0.6 RTF it will behave differently, at 0.5 RTF it will behave differently and at the end 0.3 RTF it will behave differently. So these are the parameters. 
So you know you are picking up objects and moving it around. I noticed. Let's take the Coke can, right? You pick it up and it is turned around so much that if I were to move a glass of water, how would you handle that situation? I will give you a scenario based on if it is uh, lidar data, if it is through particle filter, and yeah. if uh, say for example if it is in a square room, say for example each four corners will be identical, right? Yeah. How will you localize it is in which corner of the room? For example, if we if we are in a room and all four corners are identical, mm. so I think so, at that case AMCL would fail. Because what my understanding is that AMCL would estimate its uh, pose on the basis of all those particle filter. Initially, it would pass all those particles randomly in the room, and on the basis of that, it will estimate its pose, which particle resemble more nearer to the to it. So as the bot moves ahead, so it gets confirmation. Okay, now the particles also changes, and it narrow down to the okay this part. I'm in this part of the room. That this is how AMCL work. When you're starting a robot in a simulation, you'll always start from the same point. That is okay, but in real time, this case cannot be possible. Suppose yeah. one or five, to, you cannot keep the robot same position always to start. It will be somewhere near, or it will be somewhere uh, distributed, or it can be uh, maybe ten or fifteen centimeter away from the point or somewhere. There will be some offsets. So how you can handle this offsets? Any idea? We wrote a custom perception pipeline. So at the back end, we had a YOLO based object detector. Since YOLO being the state of the art algorithm, we used that, and it works on real time. So our computation was also not affected. So with YOLO, we got the bounding box of the objects on the image. But uh, those were 2D coordinates basically, and we need coordinates in terms of 3D. So what we did was using the RealSense camera, we extracted depth at that particular centroid of the bounding box, and with the help of depth. You uh, image coordinates and the pinhole camera model. We converted those coordinates to 3D coordinates with respect to the camera frame. And once we had the 3D camera uh, coordinates with respect to camera frame, we again uh, transformed them to respect to the base link. We kept on reading about converting 2D coordinates to 3D coordinates. Uh, while working on that, we found out about a package which uh, Ross provides. It's called as image geometry. There's a function called as UV to X Y Z, which function helps us to uh, do this. But again, we need to again do the transformation since the given coordinates with respect to the camera frame, not uh, the world or the odom frame. So what was your training procedure and how many images or it requires a huge training, right? How you handle this trainings and how you handle this solo? We started with like uh, runner experiments and made a robot manually go there. Took couple of images. So we took around 50 to 60 images for the initial from the simulation. Then we added a manual argumenting. We argumented the errors and transformed them to around 450 images. And uh, using those 450 images, and we trained Yolo V3 Tiny. And to like avoid the process of getting more data, we used the ImageNet weights and retrained them. So this for this you handle the positive cases, right? How do you handle the negative cases? You have to train something. This is the class here, class of battery, and something you have to train it as class of class. something. It is not right. Default cases you should train right. How do you handle uh, this? So sir, so we took like a since we had like different objects on different tables, we took images from all the tables and wherever object objects were present, and based on the images. We labeled all the objects. So since we like we were confirmed that this is going to be our situation, the robot is going to be near any of these tables. Those images are sufficient to train all the cases. Most of the teams here have gone with Find Object 2D, which is a ROS package and uses conventional, traditional OpenCV methods such as PNP algorithm to find out the depth. As well as the X Y coordinates as well. Why we didn't go with that was because uh, one, it's not robust enough. You have to give it a lot of data to even effectively detect objects. And second, it, it sometimes gives you a very erroneous value. Those values are very erratic in nature, which are nowhere even close to the object centroid. As we've mentioned in the video, our Yolo's coordinates are very accurate. We in fact measured it, and it was giving around two to three mm accuracy. in both uh, in all three x y and z so this is something that we've we've been looking forward to for a very long time and we've achieved this we're we're happy that we've achieved this what is the difficulty you faced or uh, this is a skid steering right a differential drive skid steering mechanism what is the advantages and disadvantages of skid steering using in an indoors indoor environment i want how skid steering is an advantage or a pro or a cons Uh, can you explain your pros and cons in the indoor context the main problem you need to do is you have to maintain the pad across the four uh, maintaining pad between the two motors and maintaining the pad between the four motors is little complex if you have four motors and that would be a tedious in controlling and maintaining
they handled the algorithm in little different manner maybe the sas question is like to elaborate to understand in your format at every corner your robo stopped it yes correct and and, and it turned and it actually you have not combined the linear and angular velocity together whereas other teams have done the same like they have combined their taking of turns were smooth your robo were taking exactly the right right angle turns and he inserted only the initial point and the destination point it goes in a set it plans different path each time so it was not certain every time so i would like to make it accurate and certain the path should be accurate so i inserted some intermediate navigation points at which mm-hmm. it turns right angle and it goes towards the path and it this path is uh, will be certain every time this path will be followed by the robot every time it uh, goes through this path oh okay so that is there is a difference actually i have seen this maybe when i see the motion profile it is like they have added the intermittent point that is they have added the intermittent way points so that they are obstructing the, the they are stopping the freedom of the total planning so make it certain and uh, it should be accurate for us and uh, the reason why it turns a little bit fast was uh, we thought it can uh, rotate fast if it goes linearly faster it may fall back with the harm but it can rotate faster i guess so we we increased to that uh, angular velocity what was your minimum value kept and what is the performance you observe what was the maximum sir, like, value kept and what was the performance you observe so for uh, velocity we took 0.8 i guess 0.8 mm-hmm. meter per second it was okay if i uh, increase 0.9 uh, at certain point it uh, drops with the arm vertically so we set the point to 0.8 itself if i increase the angular velocity above 1.3 it was very abrupt even miss from the gripper sometimes i don't think like uh, completed in simulation so it will real 100% it will work in real environment don't be little uh, lethargic or don't take your steps back and you say i have completed robot so don't be that respect so please uh, move forward with your learning mode because simulation is will as per i said it is 90% but practically it is not to that 90% you can prove your algorithms prove your tra- path tracking everything can prove but the real physics cannot be brought into gazebo simulation as what is happening in uh, real time so there will be some laggings when you deal with real robots so i urge you to use the same thing deploy it in some of your robots or try to do it in arduino bot or try to use your pc itself and try to do something and make sure that this algorithm runs in your bot as well so this would be one exercise beyond after this competition don't stop if you stop after this competition you are maybe whatever you learned you will be forgetting in one or year years or so so please use this learning throughout maybe uh, i would thank yendra because yendra was one of my uh, eye opener or a stepping stone where i learned embedded or work where i learned robotics now i am very proud to say that we are a robotics startup so this is what the transformation or this is one of the myself be one of the uh, example or a senior alumni uh, who can showcase what can be transformed from a participant to an entrepreneur so this is what i wanted to highlight so that is the story of a theme in the eantra robotics competition eyrc 2020 21 featuring industry 4.0 themes we try to fit the highlights of four intense hours of finals interaction into a 20 minute video to give you a taste of what goes on in learning with the yantra we particularly thank our jury members for sharing with us their valuable insights into the thought processes that make for great engineering it's truly an engineering masterclass so till next year's competition god bless and jai hind